so much talk about politics. So, OK, put your hand up if you are sick of the election already. Well, I thought so. Well, thankfully, there's a whole bunch of minor parties that are adding some much-needed colour and spice to this year's campaign. My plans are clear. It's up to Mr Abbott to explain his. What I will do is grow a stronger economy. If you believe K Rudd and Tones, this election is all about them. <laughs> Keith Littler reckons that's bollocks. We've had enough. We want our voices heard and we are prepared to vote for minority parties. As a petrol head, he says the major parties have ignored the interests of car fans for too long. But instead of complaining about it, three months ago, Keith formed the Motoring Enthusiasts Party of Australia, and he wants to win a seat in the Senate. I'm there to give us a voice. I'm there to, to represent the whole community. We're loud and proud, apparently. <laughs> Over 50 minor parties have nominated for the election, as well as the motoring enthusiasts. There's the Sex Party, the Sovereignty Party, the Outdoor Recreation Party. There's even a group standing up for smokers' rights. Any one of these parties has a very small chance indeed of getting elected. But as we've seen a couple of times in the past, because of the way our Senate election system works, they can actually get seats in Parliament from a very small share of the vote. It happened in 2004, when Family First Steve Fielding was elected to the Senate after winning just 1.9% of the primary vote. The key was preferences. Labor had done deals with Fielding to try and take a seat off the Greens, but the plan backfired and enough votes flowed Fielding's way for him to win the seat. Keith Littler hopes something similar happens for him on September 7th. When we look at the numbers that are behind us, and they really are huge numbers, you know, if all of those people on the day come along and say, you know what, we're loud, we're proud, we're motoring enthusiasts, Keithy, you've got our vote. We're not actually going knocking on doors. In fact, we, we're making a conscious effort this election campaign to be the least annoying party. Tim Bohm is not a train nut, but he's so passionate about bullet trains that he started a political party to get it. We feel that uh, high-speed rail will definitely change the way Australians live and work. And if anyone's been on a high-speed train, they just know that they're cool. <laughs> and in an era of carefully crafted sound bites, Build, build, build. We have a clean energy future for all our kids. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Perhaps the best thing about the minor parties is that they're not run by professional politicians. We started the party because... The, the Bullet Train for Australia party because... Uh... Oh, my God, I've just stuffed it already. <laughs> and whether they get 100 votes or a few thousand, most minor parties are just happy to get their message out there. Whether we make it to the Senate or not, they are certainly going to know that we were there. Just the fact that a bunch of friends get together and then get huge online support, get huge community support around a single issue that it hasn't been touched by the, the major parties for 30 years means that, you know, democracy is live and well. Some of them are like fumbling their soundbite there, but I loved it. I loved they it. They look like it's real cool. human beings. It's honest. You know, when my mm. son, my eldest son, who's uh, 15, knew that I was coming down, he said, Oh, you've got a great story on tonight. It's about all the minor political parties. And he's not even interested in politics. Yeah. So, yep, they got he's the youth vote. Trains, right? And you yeah. don't have to be an amateur politician to fumble your statements. Uh, Bill Shorten today <laughs> was trying to rally the workers of Brisbane. He was trying to warn them about Tony Abbott and the fact that Tony. It still doesn't like them, and check out how he went. The leopard does not change its spots on workplace relations. They are desperate to say they have changed. And when I might be seduced, lulled into a false sense of optimism that he has changed, I turn on the National Geographic channel, I look at the show on leopards, and I know that leopards do not change their spots. <laughs> What's that got to do with Tony Abbott? Seriously. That was the worst analogy in the history of bad analogies. <laughs> I'm not budding for... I'm, oh, now I've, I've got his disease. <laughs> How not current is that leopard documentary, too? Oh, I turn it on, cutting-edge documentary, uh, leopards don't change it. We've known that for hundreds I'll of years. I'll tell you what's going on. There's leopards in Africa now trying to hunt down Bill Shorten for mentioning <laughs> that. We'll be back in a moment, don't go anywhere.